Hi, it's Jan from YouMakeItSimple.com. In today's sewing tutorial, I'm going to go over some serger tips and tricks. We're going to cover corners and curves. Make sure you're watching till the end of the video. I'm going to show you some extra bonus serging tips that you might not want to miss. Let's get started. Let's go over first how to sew around an outer curve and an inner curve. You might find this on a neck facing of a shirt or just other items that you need to finish the edge. Start with the edge of the fabric along the edge of the cutting edge of your serger and just start sewing along the edge of that straight edge as you sew. So you'll just be using your hands to manipulate the fabric. Don't turn it, just let the fabric feed and then gently guide it with your hands. See how it's curving in? We want to keep it along the edge. So I'm just going to pivot it slowly. And it's just a gentle rotation with the fabric. a nice edge is laying flat. Now let's do the inner curve. Again lining up the right edge of the fabric along the edge of your serger plate and cutting edge. And the same thing but this time we're going to rotate it this way. And this is a little bit more tricky because it is a little bit more of a sharper turn so just go slow. And I'm not, there's not a lot of, you don't want it to pucker, so it's just a nice gentle rotation. You want to keep your focus on this area when you're sewing, just to keep that right along the edge. And if it does pucker just a little bit, there's not, the, the iron pressing that will just take care of it. Now let's go over how to sew around an outer square edge and an inner corner square edge. Now that might seem like really tricky and how are you going to do that and keep it square? Well I've got a really cool trick that you can do that makes that really easy to do. So we'll just start by sewing some of a few outer corners. We're going to take a few stitches past the edge of the fabric. Now what I like to do is just stitch up to the edge and then use my hand to turn the hand wheel toward you a few stitches. I'm going to bring my needle to the highest point, lift up my presser foot and pull the fabric just back a little bit so the thread comes off the little looper tags that are right here. And that will free it up so that you can pivot your fabric and place it back underneath the presser foot. I'm going to bring the edge of my fabric and bump it up to the, you can feel where the, the threads come down and I want to bring it to the edge and then place my presser foot back down. And you want the needles to start coming down just on the outside close to the edge of your fabric. So again, I'm going to come sew to the edge, use my hand wheel, turning it towards me a few times, lift up my presser foot, pull the fabric back gently a little bit to release the threads on that louver there or the, those little prongs so that it enables me to flip my fabric. Bring it back to the edge, put down my presser foot and start sewing again. So that alleviates all those funky little, I, I haven't always known this and so when I was doing projects that had cornered edges I would have all these funky little tails and look how clean that is, especially if you wanted, to, you wanted a finished edge of like a napkin or something. 
Now let's attack the cornered edge. So I'm going to sew down a ways and when I start to get close to that corner, I'm going to pull that other edge in line so it makes a straight edge. And then I'm going to just make a little pleat. Just fold, it'll just not make a natural little pleat there. It looks kind of like an ice cream cone, that triangle there. And this is, it makes that straight. And you just continue to sew. Now let's do another corner. Couple stitches, needle in the high position, lift up your presser foot, pull it back gently, pivot it, align the fabric on the side. And you can see that there's just a little bit of a pucker there but when I press that, it should come out pretty, it, it will flatten out. If you have a bit of a thicker fabric, another thing you can do to alleviate a pucker is to just take your scissors and make a, just a tiny clip right in the corner there, like that much. And that, that will help ease that a little bit. With with lighter fabrics and um, lightweight fabrics, you're not going to have to worry about that. Let's try that. Let's try that again and with that clip. When you get close to that corner, pivot so it's straight. Again, I'm going to make that little pleat. and then sew. See how nice that? There's no pucker. I recommend getting your fabric, if you know you have to do an outer edge or a, is just to do a practice piece and see how your fabric um, reacts to that corner and if you whether you need to clip that or not but that looks pretty awesome and it works like a charm so if you're starting a seam and you don't want a tell and you know you have a you're surging around and finishing an edge but you don't want that obnoxious tail hanging out so just start sewing take a few stitches and then lift up your presser foot and grab the tail that it left and pull it around to the front and then put your presser foot back down and just kind of hold it out to the side as you sew and it'll cut that off and then it catches that in the stitching so it's not going to come undone and continue stitching and then to not leave a tail at the end, stitch to the end, take your hand wheel, turn it towards you one or two times, make sure the needle is in the upright position, lift up your presser foot, gently pull it back a little bit and flip it over. And then bring the edge of the fabric right where the needle comes down and align with the side there and start sewing again. Now to sew over where the the knife just cut into that seam. We're just going to sew down a few, uh, down to that point and taper it off. If I were opening that up for a seam, I don't have that obnoxious tail there. And even if I was top stitching, that doesn't look too bad there. Now let's go over if you were sewing in the round where you're going to sew all the way around and how do you go off the edge how do you stop sewing without and making that transition so I'll, well let's just say we're sewing this is good for when you're putting on a neckband or an armband of a t-shirt or something or around 
like a square piece of fabric that you want to just finish it off it's it has an I'll show you how to start and stop that so where you where we're coming back to where we started pull the tail out and we're going to just come stitch until we see how that's kind of at an angle we want to stitch until it's the same seam allowance there so I'm going to overlap that and we don't want the the knife to keep cutting or else it will fray the edge it will snip off the seam or the stitching so what you'll do is bring the needle in the upright position open up your serger and we're going to disengage the knife I'm just going to flip it up there and continue sewing following that edge and then to just to angle it off lift up your presser foot and pivot it so at a right angle put the presser foot back down and start sewing leave a good three inch tail and you can see how that just overlapped keeps it straight and now I'm going to tuck that tail underneath the looper thread stitching using a tapestry needle and just thread it underneath those pull it through And then if you really were concerned about it, you can add a little piece, a dab of fray check if you wanted to. There you have it. Way to start and stop your seam. So another serging seam tip is when you are sewing two layers of a seam together and you don't want all that bulk on one side, See how bulky that is with two layers of that stitching? When you're just sewing maybe two blocks together, or this is really handy when you're sewing a knit net band on a t-shirt and you don't want all that bulk. What you do is just find that center point, fold it, if, you, if it's a folded item like this, just clip the center don't go all the way through just through that first layer of stitching don't go through that second stitching but I've got that clip and I'm going to flip that to one side and then when I fold it and put the ends together see how that is stacked like that so the seam is lined up but I don't have both seam allowances on the same side so there's not a lot of bulk. This is really handy, like I said, for neck bands or maybe blocks of quilting. When you're using quilting blocks and you've surged them and you don't want all that bulk. So that, and then you can go ahead and make your seam. And it's just nice and flat and less bulky. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, Make sure you do that, click on the bell, and give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Comment in the comments below of anything, any questions you have, or let me know if there's something specific, sewing or crafting that you want to learn about. We'll see you next time.